All right, what's up guys? Hope you all are having a great day today. We are going to be once again taking a look at a truly magnificent YouTube video here. We are going to be watching a video from probably one of the most infamous console fanboys in the entire history of YouTube, that of course being Crap Gamer, or as he's better known, Crap Gamer Reviews. Now this man used to be the biggest Xbox fanboy in the history of YouTube. Like this man would hype up anything Xbox did. I mean, it was almost at the point, like if Phil Spencer took a dump like two hours earlier in the morning, this man would put out a video saying Xbox just destroys PlayStation. Like, literally anything could happen and he would hype it up. And well, basically his channel kind of blew up surrounding the Xbox One X. He was the main one just hyping up this console like crazy. Him and Colt Eastwood, which, you know, the two of them are fantastic YouTube channels. But anyway, this dude was hyping up the Xbox One X for almost two years. And while he literally set some of the most unrealistic expectations, like this console was going to run everything at like 4K 60 max settings. Games would run two times better on the Xbox One X compared to a similarly PC. Like, the sky was not even the limit for this dude. Like, he literally was hyping this thing up to no end, and well, once the Xbox One X launch came around, it was a lot more disappointing than everybody was hyping it up to be. We saw that Microsoft lied about it. Big shocker, a console manufacturer lied before a console launch to hype it up and get people to go out and buy it. And people wonder why I'm skeptical about the PS5 and Xbox Series X, but you know, that's my fault, dude. But anyway, yeah, it was a complete disappointment. None of the shit he was hyping up came true, and overall, the console was just kind of more of the same. Like, yeah, you got a little bit better of a resolution on some games, but it wasn't like this massive leap he was trying to claim it was. And well, after that, his views kind of started to drop because that was the last little bit of hype in the Xbox fanboy community. So when he saw his views started to drop, he did the typical thing that a console fanboy does. They latch onto the popular system and Crap Gamer basically became a PlayStation fanboy channel. And I mean, it's absolutely hilarious. And it shows you how stupid the people are in this community, okay? Because all of a sudden, all these PlayStation fanboys just flock to his YouTube channel. Like they forget the seven years prior prior of legitimate corporate slavery for Xbox, and now that he's saying what they want to hear, you know, he's like the savior of humanity to them. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Like, if anyone had any doubt that console fanboys are some of the most low IQ individuals on this entire website, well, I mean, look no further. But anyway, guys, the title of the video we're going to be watching here is Sony's Own Devs Leak PS5 News That Destroys Digital Foundry in Xbox. Fanboys are going insane. Now, we watched this live on stream the other night. It was actually really fun. Funny, so I figured this would make a good video. Why not do these console videos are doing really well Like Sony apparently is advertising on them So I'm getting a bunch of ps5 ads on these videos according to people watching them and well the ad rates are pretty damn good So I may not be excited for the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X But I sure am excited to get that sweet sweet ad revenue. So guys without further ado Let's go ahead and check out this absolutely magnificent YouTube video from the man the myth the legend crap gamer I have no idea what it means by unscripted gaming, but apparently Crap Gamer is the home of unscripted gaming on YouTube, guys. You know, this should be really great. You know, so dude, that actually kind of fucking scares me every single time. Like, 10 seconds of just pure silence. Then all of a sudden, the motherfucker just starts talking out of nowhere, dude. Like, this is some top-tier video quality, if I do say so myself. You know, suddenly things have gone from bad to worse for Microsoft and the Xbox Series X. And I don't mean to pile on, but... And, I, and also, I want to point this out. I don't mean to sound happy that I was right about all this stuff. Yeah, one quick look at your recent videos, dude, and we know that's a fucking lie. <laughs> Despite the fact that I heard from multiple pro Xbox YouTubers years ago that Xbox gave up in 2015 in order to prepare for the next generation, they're even worse off in 2020 than they were in 2013, in my opinion. Bro, this is some fanboy-ass logic if I've ever heard it, dude. Like, are you actually gonna claim that Xbox right now is at a worse place than fucking 2013? Like, remember, no used games, always having to be online. You had to buy a $100 spy cam that watched and listened to you at all times, dude. That you couldn't even turn the console on if it wasn't plugged into the back constantly, bro. Like, they completely fucked up. Like, they did everything in their power to make that console as unappealing as possible, but you're really gonna push the narrative that 2020 Xbox 
is in a worse place than 2013 Xbox. You know, forgive me as I press X to down on that shit. But we got some epic news from Sony's own developers. Wow, this shuts up the fanboys. This gets me very happy. What's up, everybody? Crab Gamer here with Crab Gamer Reviews. All right, first off, I just want to say I hate how much people do this. Like, they get a minute into their video, and then they're like, oh, what's up, dude? My name is... It's like, we don't fucking care, for one. And two, you have a fucking intro with your YouTube name on it before the video even starts. Your name is underneath the video, too. Like, how stupid do you think people are? Oh, wait, this is a console fanboy channel. Never mind, I retract that statement. I mean, Dreamcast guy does the exact same thing it really just kind of pisses me off but yeah that's beside the point but this man is using sony's own developers as a source of why the playstation 5 is better than the xbox series x dude what a reputable source you might as well pull up a fucking playstation 5 commercial but yeah the next minute of this video is literally him just begging for subs and likes so i'm just gonna go ahead and speed it up Microsoft has nobody to blame but themselves for this stuff, okay? Uh, if you want to look at what kind of what's going on, it's pretty clear that they obviously were not ready for next generation. They weren't ready for last generation. Who knows when they're going to be. I think it's pretty clear that they're mostly ready for, you know, a game pass to be an app where people don't need to even buy their hardware to play it but even at that point you need console you need exclusives and things like that i really love when they make this claim like no company can survive in the gaming industry without making consoles and exclusives which i think is beyond hilarious dude like you don't have to have them like activision blizzard for example let's take a look at the receipts here this is real financial data this is no fucking bullshit here this is not console fanboy logic this is pure numbers okay if you look at the market cap of activision Blizzard. It's about 60 to 61 billion dollars. They are a solely video game company. They make nothing but video games. They don't sell consoles. They don't have exclusives. They just put out games on as many platforms as possible. But then you look at Sony and their market cap is around 90 billion dollars, okay? Which is impressive, dude. I'm not trying to take away from that. But they're not just a gaming company. They have a bunch of other shit. They have their music division, which is really profitable for them. They have their movie division. They have their electronics divisions where they make TVs, phones, headphones, all sorts of shit, okay? Sony is not a purely gaming company, but you can see, like, there's not that much difference in their market cap, big picture. Like, yeah, $30 billion, that's not a lot of money. It's really not in the business world, but that's beside the point, dude. You're talking about Microsoft, who's worth $1.6 trillion. There's kind of a bit of a difference there, but, I mean, by this logic, no company that makes video games that doesn't also make consoles and exclusives, they just can't exist in the video game market, dude. Like, forget EA, Ubisoft, Activision, CD Projekt, Red, fucking Valve. All those companies are completely irrelevant because they don't make consoles or exclusive games dude I mean, you really just can't beat this fucking logic and you guys might remember when sony did their initial playstation 5 reveal and they showcased the games like ratchet and clank demon souls gran turismo 7 uh, spider-man you know they, they showcased all these games okay horizon forbidden west uh digital foundry realistically um basically got <laughs> basically did a rundown and said okay well it looks like these games are all aiming for 30 frames per second and a lot of the xbox fanboys ran with that i mean it's kind of hard not to because if you remember back to a video i made previously which if you guys haven't seen this video definitely go check it out it's absolutely hilarious dude. like this guy's actually fucking retarded that i made a video on but yeah basically what happened is i made this video on this dude who literally like in the video was saying that sony was targeting 30 fps on every single game they're putting out for the most part because 4k tvs can't handle 4k 60 hdr bro and if you don't fucking believe me listen to this shit actually explain to us why many of these games were running at 30 frames per second and it had nothing to do with limitations of the hardware matt Hargett points out in a tweet that the problem is not with the console but with players tvs he writes that a typical cheap 4k tv can only do 4 to 0 hdr at 4k and 60 hertz but can push the HDR to 422 at 4K and 30 hertz. Most game developers would rather have their games look good in 4K than have them run at 60 frames per second, and it seems they must sacrifice one or the other. Developers want their games looking filmic, as hard it puts it. I mean, it's kind of hard to argue differently after you hear that shit, dude. Okay, a lot of the Xbox fanboys were like, oh, egg PlayStation is not capable of running this, not capable of running that. I mean, that's just the truth about it, okay? I feel bad for the Xbox fanboys when the same shit happens with their console. Oh, well, unlucky. Everybody said that, you know, it wasn't capable, it couldn't do this, it couldn't do that. It, it was pretty ridiculous, in my opinion, you know? Um, 
at the same time, we now know that that's simply not the case, right? We know that that's not the case. Uh, since that point in time, Spider-Man Miles Morales was confirmed to be, you know, a 4K 60 frames mode as well. Now, this is what I want to clarify here. Is it a true 4K 60 FPS mode where the game is going to be running a native 4K and a locked 60 FPS? Or is it going to be like God of War on the PS4 Pro where they targeted 60 FPS, but in reality, the only time you'd hit 60 FPS in that game is when you paused it and you were going through the menus, bro. <laughs> like, honestly, that game barely ever hit past like 42 frames per second. So that's the thing I want to know. And is it going to be like checkerboard 4K again, like Microsoft and Sony tried to pull with the Pro and the Xbox One X where they literally like had the games running between 1080p and 1440p somewhere between that and they would just like upscale it to 4k and it wasn't actually a native resolution because you know companies like to lie about this type of shit and I just find it very suspicious too that Sony hasn't released any 4k 60 gameplay for either Spider-Man or Ratchet and Clank both of those gameplay demos are in 30 FPS dude is it because they don't want people to see the frame drops is it because they don't want people to analyze the trailer and see it's not actually running in native 4k i mean that's kind of the questions we need to be asking you would think after the complete flop of the xbox one x compared to crap gamers expectations you know he'd be a little bit more cautious this time but i guess not dude gotta get those clicks uh we also know now that you know gran turismo is gonna have the 60 frame we also know demon souls is gonna have a 60 frames option gran turismo is a racing game which is like one of the most undemanding genres of video games on the market so i would like pray to god that game would be running at 4k 60 in 2020 like i mean there would actually be a problem if that wasn't happening i think even the xbox one x ran like forza at 4k 60 native so you know thank god for that one and then demon souls is a fucking ps3 game dude it may be getting remastered but it's still a ps3 game okay let's keep it real if a literal PS3 remaster was not running at 4K 60 on the PS5 in 2020, Sony should just give it up at that point, dude, because it's hopeless. So, the first party stuff is getting that option to do 60 frames and beyond, and I think that's absolutely incredible. Wait, they're doing above 4K 60, dude? They're going beyond that? The only company I've heard mention that is Microsoft with Halo Infinite multiplayer at 120 FPS, but I haven't really heard Sony mention that, so correct me if I'm wrong here, but this sounds like some major fucking cap, unless you're one of those people who actually believes the 8K gaming shit. With that being said, the developers just proved Digital Foundry wrong, just proved a lot of Xbox fanboys wrong, just proved everything wrong so according to a new famatsu interview insomniac games ratchet and clank rift apart which we saw uh that will feature two resolution modes a 4k 30 frames per second and a 60 frames per second so if it's two different resolution modes that basically confirms one's at 4k and one isn't i mean end of story dude it doesn't run games at 4k 60 gg unlucky and furry platformer number 87 aka ratchet and clank isn't even that visually impressive to be honest uh and they clarified it a little bit uh it's gonna be uh, native 4K 30 with ray tracing, temporal 4K reconstruction was 60 frames per second with ray tracing. So you can probably imagine that this is going to be 1440, maybe 1600p. So it's not running a true next generation game like furry platformer number 89, Ratchet and Clank at 4K 60, dude. I mean, it's irrelevant what resolution between 1080p and 4K it's going to be at and then upscaled. It's not running at 4K 60. Get fucked. I just find it really ironic too because this is crap gamer, the man who hyped up the difference between true 4K and checkerboard 4K when we were talking about the PS4 Pro versus the Xbox One X back when he was an Xbox fanboy. You know, apparently there was a huge fucking difference apparently it's not a big deal anymore kind of funny how that shit works right uh with with some reconstruction and using ray tracing so if you want to know how good they're they are at doing this kind of stuff uh the first ratchet and clank was like that okay it didn't have i don't think it had a 60 frames mode i can't remember offhand it might have but it looked amazing and actually digital foundry said you can't tell a difference between their reconstruction and the 4k they also did the same thing with wait a second here i could have swore at the beginning of this video you were calling out digital foundry for getting something wrong are we only going to listen to them now when it fits the narrative dude is that what we're doing here they're only an expert on the situation would you agree with them i mean that couldn't be the case now could it i mean i'm just getting some pretty mixed messages here uh digital foundry realistically um basically got <laughs> basically did a rundown and said okay well it looks like these games are all aiming for 30 frames per second and a lot of the xbox fanboys ran with that okay a lot of the xbox fanboys were like oh playstation is not capable of running this and actually digital foundry said you can't tell the difference between their reconstruction and the 4k 
They also did the same thing with Spider-Man, and it looked amazing. So you're probably going to get 1440p, 60 frames with ray tracing, and that's all the bells and whistles. That You can't ask for much more je next generation than that. I mean, low-key, this is kind of pathetic, dude. Like, this is Craft Gamer, the man who was hyping up back in, like, 2016 and 2017 that the Xbox One X was basically the new standard of gaming that it was going to usher in an era of all games on consoles running at 4K 60 standard. Like, that was going to be the baseline. But now he's moving the goalposts down to 1440p three years later for the next generation consoles, dude. I mean, it's just absolutely hilarious. And you are a fool if you actually actually think these games are going to be maxed out dude these games are not going to be running at ultra settings they're going to be majorly downscaled they'll probably be around medium to high maybe in good situations but it's not going to be with all the bells and whistles and that is a wishful thinking if you think otherwise um ratchet's fur is ray traced and also affected by the wind uh it's got full dual sense integration no loading screens ever period uh, it's actually also and i did a video about this it's confirmed launch window they showed everything running entirely on the playstation 5 now think about this for a second and I've pointed this out multiple times yes Sony had to pay over $200 million for Insomniac Games. What the fuck does that have to do with anything, dude? Why the fuck do we care how much Sony paid for a game studio? But I think the real takeaway here is, dude, is furries have a lot to be excited for when it comes to Ratchet & Clank. You know, PS5, for the furries, they have Ratchet & Clank with fucking ray-traced fur. And then they had that really shitty furry dating sim or whatever, the fucking Volcano High School game. You know, I think PlayStation's new tagline should be changed from for the players to for the furries. Or better yet, for the degenerates. But you know, you can make your own choice let me know in the comments but you know what that gets you that gets you two games at your launch for your new playstation console right you get spider-man miles morales and people might want to call it dlc or whatever you can say whatever you want but the bottom line is people are going to go into the store see spider-man buy that with a playstation 5 i mean he's not wrong dude when you realize there's people like this in the world he's probably 100 percent fucking spot on <laughs> Oh. But this is your fight. We will see it through the tears. Oh, it's gorgeous. Dude, this shit still fucking gets me. It's fucking sand, dude. What the fuck is gorgeous about a fucking desert? And then early next year, it looks like we're getting a, this Ratchet and Clank, which looks absolutely phenomenal. Now, even before uh, when I was a, a quote-unquote Xbox fanboy, I was talking about how the first Ratchet and Clank, which I did a review for, was absolutely incredible. And I said that that, that game absolutely blew me away. I was so pumped up by it. Um, and I, I just I just think that this is going to be even better. And I think this is a full-on triple-A game, and it sounds incredible. Uh, Bro, the way this man's talking about Ratchet and Clank, maybe he's a furry, dude. You know, maybe that's why he's so excited for the PlayStation 5. He found out about that Goodbye Volcano High game, and then he found out about Ratchet and Clank getting ray-traced fur, dude, and that was enough, man. He decided, you know what? Fuck the Xbox. I'm getting a PlayStation. I mean, I'm kind of just kidding, but what if, dude? <laughs> what if it actually was the fucking case and Crap Gamer is a closeted furry? Dude, that would actually be fucking hilarious. Uh, you know, I gotta say that they've done a fantastic job with this and you know i'm pumped for it you know i want to see what sony can do this proves you know digital foundry kind of wrong in an aspect i mean this is the mixed messaging i'm getting from this shit dude like earlier you said they were wrong about something then you use them as a source on something that you agreed with so then they're reputable and now you're saying they got something wrong i mean it's pretty ironic when you know you're calling out digital foundry in the title of your video then you use them as a reputable source in your video to prove one of your points right and now you're trying to bash them again like dude the mixed messaging is all over the fucking place um you know this proves a lot of the naysayers wrong the the place that the xbox fanboys wrong microsoft wrong to be honest with you because everybody was saying that the playstation 5 couldn't do this or couldn't do that now we know completely different story completely different situation and you know what they've been able to accomplish has been nothing short of amazing but they couldn't accomplish ratchet and clank 4k 60 fps so I don't really know, dude. It seems like people weren't so wrong after all. And we are now starting to see the Xbox circle uh, sort of implode on itself. Even the most hardcore Xbox fanboys are starting to realize, hey, they haven't announced a single 
uh, a triple AIP. They haven't shown a single stitch of next gen games running on this thing. I mean, if you're going to throw out that cinematic trailer of Spider Man, like it's actual gameplay, then, you know, maybe they could throw out the cinematic trailer of Hellblade 2 running an engine on the Xbox Series X. So, by your own technical definition, they have shown it. So, you just really have to appreciate the irony here. What's the hold up? Why are they afraid to do that? Um, I, I just really feel like that is something that is is a bit of a of a misnomer for microsoft you can only kind of mislead people for so long before they really catch on and and they start to kind of call you out for it so you can only kind of mislead people for so long before they really catch on and and they start to kind of call you out for it. So I'm not going to lie, man. It sounded like you were describing your entire fucking YouTube channel right there. So I do think that that's going to be something that Microsoft is going to have to deal with as well. So, again, this is something that a lot of uh, Xbox fans looked at. We saw this footage yesterday, and everybody's like, well, how can this, how can Ratchet and Clank be such a, such a showpiece like this right like people realistically want to know that like how is this thing such a showpiece dude this game does not look like a showpiece at all am i like the only one who thinks ratchet and clank just looks okay i don't know like i was not blown away by it at all like in my opinion games like infamous second son back on the ps4 when it launched look better than this shit maybe it's just me i don't know let me know if it's just me like i'm not trying to shit on it but to me it does not look like a next gen showcase title like it looks okay but it's not anything that great how did they able to accomplish this? How are they able to make these games so fast and it'd be such a quality and just the instant load times like boom, boom, boom. And even David Jaffe, the former, uh, you know, the creator of God of War and things like that. Even he was saying how that's like next gen, next level stuff. Like you're literally going from one uh, world to, to the next and you're seeing all the destructible stuff. You're seeing everything floating around in the background. It looks next gen. People keep saying, hey, I haven't seen anything that looks next gen yet, and I gotta tell you what, this Ratchet and Clank looks every bit of next gen that you could imagine. Dude, like, if this is what next gen is, like, at the peak of what I could imagine, like, thank fuck I'm on PC. Like, honestly, like, I really don't get it, dude. It does not look that impressive to me. I've watched the gameplay demo. I don't know. We watched it on stream. I was not that impressed, dude. Like, it looks like every other fucking 3D platformer that's released in the past 10 years. Maybe just a little bit shinier. I don't know. I'm not really that impressed with it, obviously, but if this is all I can imagine for next gen, you know, thank God I don't play on console primarily anymore. I think that this is something this really really uh incredible and it makes their launch lineup within that first year all the even more impressive I, i've just got to say that i'm absolutely thrilled to see what they've been able to accomplish and what they've been able to uh you know get out there and again this puts microsoft in a very bad spot so there's one confirmed game for launch day for the ps5 from sony it's that spider-man game which is like 10 hours long dude i think it's a little bit early to start saying oh dude the xbox is fucked dude i'm just legitimately surprised this man hasn't mentioned the ssd yet that they've actually kind of done themselves um because they have nothing to show like again how they could not have anything to show in which we're starting to see that now uh, i i cannot begin to imagine it's called covid it kind of fucked a lot of people over as you know look phil spencer is is the head of xbox yeah and you used to suck his dick on the daily what's your point he's been the head of xbox since 2014 people might point to his promotion in 2017 as this as the turning point but you got to be real he was the head of xbox in 2014 and we are heading into 2021 uh you know if the lockhart is real that's five consoles under him and you know we got to look at at the game situation and say the games that we've gotten and the games that we haven't gotten are are him as well okay if you're not running the ship right i i think there's a problem like in the nfl or any kind of sport if a coach or a manager isn't getting the job done for seven years, what happens? I just want to know your metric of performance you're using because I feel like Microsoft probably has a way better idea of how their leaders are performing within each division. I mean, you're kind of forgetting the fact that Xbox has literally been a sinking ship ever since the Xbox One reveal. And for the most part, they've literally just been in damage control mode trying to keep the thing from fucking going under until the next console generation. So I think in that regard, if that's their goal, he's done a pretty decent job. Like Game Pass and everything's fucking dope. But I just think it's funny. This dude like thinks he knows more than the fucking corporate 
leadership of Xbox. Like, I really just want to know what metric this dude's using to evaluate Phil Spencer's performance. Because, I mean, if you look at the actual moves that Sony's been making recently, they're kind of moving more towards Xbox's strategy, which I find even more fucking ironic. Uh, you know, for me personally, I just feel like there's all kinds of leadership issues across Microsoft. They're, they're bringing people in. They're doing these things. Like, I just do not see how this is going to keep continuing to go on and how this the buck gets passed around. Yeah, Microsoft leadership definitely has no idea what the fuck they're doing. Like, the Xbox executives are so loud on social media any other time, but when you bring up the lack of exclusives and the lack of games and stuff like that, everybody all of a sudden just, you know, they're quiet and, and you can't see anything, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, dude, you're 100% correct. You know, any random motherfucker that tweets at them on a Tuesday morning, maybe a Sunday afternoon, they should just reveal to them every single video game that's in development that hasn't been announced yet. I mean, that sounds like a pretty solid strategy if you ask me. Um, you know, I, I just feel like this is something that they, they won't probably re recover from. I knew that the Xbox Series X would not do as well as even the Xbox One, but I had hoped that it would, you know, do something. Uh, now, you know, it looks like <laughs> it looks like they're not going to have anything. I mean, you can't even point to, you know, the medium, like, wow, a, a digital-only four-hour game, five-hour game, like, that's not going to sell Xboxes. I mean, not every single video game that releases has to be for the sole purpose of selling a console, and Microsoft's made it pretty clear. They just want you to play their games. It doesn't matter what platform it's on, because regardless, they're making fucking money, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Why do you think Sony's moving to putting more PlayStation games on PC? Because they want to make money, dude. The only reason businesses exist is to make money. It's really not that hard to grasp. I'm sorry. Even if they were to get flight simulator out on xbox series x that's not going to sell xboxes it's, i'm sorry i'm not saying it's not a good looking quote-unquote game but i'm just saying that there's probably not a large console audience for a flying simulator how do you even know that like what the fuck is that dude like literally you're downplaying something that doesn't even fucking exist yet and you have no idea how it'd be received but apparently no one would like that you know this puts microsoft in a bad bad situation sony once again proves Digital Foundry wrong, proves that, that they know what they're doing, and, you know, I feel like they're they're all over this, you know, this is this is Sony t Tony, Sony's time to shine right now, and, you know what, I gotta say, um, you know, a lot of people said that there's a crap gamer curse on PlayStation, because I like PlayStation, and I've been playing more PlayStation lately, uh, I have to say, man, to me, the only curse is Xbox not listening to the hardcore fans. If you're what's considered a hardcore fan and your intelligence level is indicative of the rest, I really don't fucking blame them for not listening to you. If they would have listened years ago, like what I was saying, um, you know, things maybe would have been different. Instead, I got called every single name under the book, got told I was flip-flopping, got told I was a fear monger, got told I was a, a radical, all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I ended up being right. And it's not a good look, and we need Microsoft to be competitive. If they would have listened to people like me years ago, maybe they'd be in a better chance, and I have a better chance now. Let me know what you think. Please sound off. Please consider taking a minute to subscribe. I mean, that's going to be a no for me, dog, on the subscribe. But overall, I thought this video was very informative, dude. I learned so much. Like, I learned especially that Crap Gamer should have definitely been the head of Xbox, dude. Like, if he was calling the shots, Microsoft would basically be dominating the entire video game industry right now. Sony wouldn't even be a blip on the map. Nintendo Nintendo would just be curb stomped out of existence, and Microsoft would control everything to do with video games, dude, 100%. I mean, let's just say I was on the board of Microsoft, I would definitely want someone like Crap Gamer running my gaming division, dude, like a multi-billion dollar business of its own. So, yeah, I guess the moral of the story is here, Crap Gamer knows best, he should be calling the shots, and Microsoft would be much better with him at the helm. But anyway, guys, you know, this is gonna be a pretty long video. I know a lot of you guys like the longer videos, so I figured I'd throw one out here, but if you enjoyed it and you made it this far, please feel free to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, I'm going to be live on Twitch after this goes up, so head over to my Twitch channel. Link in the description and in the pinned comment. It is September over there, so you can sub for a discount, dude. Hook your boy up. You know, I'd greatly appreciate it, man. You know, I'm looking for some tier 3 simps on the low, but anyway, yeah. Head over to my Twitch stream. It's a pretty fun time, dude, to be honest. Like, we just watch YouTube videos. Like, we watch this video live on stream. That's how I kind of found it. People asked me to check out Crap Gamer's channel, and yeah, we found this video, so that's what gave me the idea for this video to begin with. Also, I just play video games 
games, answer questions, hang out, do whatever the fuck you guys want, honestly. Like, my streams are pretty fun. They're not really structured or anything like that. It's just a pretty fun time to, like, hang out and shit. So head over there if you're interested. Link will be in the description and in the pinned comment. But yeah, man, with that said, I do want to thank you all so much for the recent support. Like, it's been absolutely insane, dude. The channels are doing insanely well recently. And yeah, I just really can't thank you guys enough. You guys are the fucking best, and I really do appreciate you guys checking out these videos. And on top of that, man, the streams have been awesome. Like, the generosity is insane, and I just got, like, a stream deck with the money I got from Twitch. So, you know, we're constantly improving that quality-ass content, even when it comes to the live stream. So, yeah, I just want to say thank you all for that, and yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.